fight. Hey everybody, welcome back to a, uh, I think it's the fourth video. I'll be darned, already, the fourth video. Alright, so this is where our character is living right now. Um, in this particular video, we're going to give it a base to stand on, so we're going to focus on that and some of the simple detailing on that, and then we'll probably just do some broad general improvements. As I look at my concept, I've noticed you know that some of the proportions on their dinosaur are quite a bit off, or it can be bulked up quite a bit, and, um, and just given generally more mass, and I think that would help a little bit with the aesthetic. But anyway, there's lots to do, so uh, let's dive into this. Please like, comment, subscribe, and you know the drill. So we'll jump in here to ZBrush right away and we'll come in here and we're just going to append a cube right away and just leave it right there it looks, it looks cool it looks like it got some kind of weird like vr headset right there it's cool yeah that's pretty neat uh we don't have time for that what are we doing all right so this is just going to be like um a foundation for our base real quick what i'm going to do is something real tricky akin to like a witchcraft it's gonna get wild in here. So I'm gonna hit P and go to my orthographic view so everything's kind of flattened out. And then I'm gonna use my control shift uh, select rectangle and just select the top faces on this cube. And then uh, this, is, this is pretty handy. I mean, there's easier ways to do this. I'm gonna run a Z remesh just to get some uniform topology and then just subdivide this guy a good amount, like five times. And I'm just, I'm just looking for polygons, essentially. And so that way, um, when I hold control with my mask pen, I can just kind of start painting uh, where my where my base is going to be and just give it kind of like an organic kind of feel. So that's the goal here for the time being. Don't get too crazy with it. Just kind of pick out a shape that feels like mud or dirt or something. It's not going to have any little uh, separated peninsula, peninsula, peninsulas, peninsula. And the English is hard. All right, so if I, one pro tip too, if you want to smooth this border and just, just hold control and left click and tap, and you can see it's feathering that border. And if you want to resharpen that, you hold control, alt, left click, tap, and it'll sharpen that guy right back up. So um, I like this. Well, let's do an extract. And it's going to give us some actual thickness to our geo. So do extract, hit accept. And now we have some nice kind of like dirt shape going on. And what I'm going to do first thing, I think, is come over here to Dynamesh and run a Dynamesh at 128. A little bit too high. Let's drop it even lower for now. And then I'm going to mask this top part, just holding control, dragging a rectangle, and invert, control F to tap. And then um, I'm just going to try to like add like kind of like a bevel, a little bit of a bevel, center my pivot here in the middle. And then run another Dynamesh and kind of just smooth things out. And then my other favorite brush to use when I'm doing organic-y kind of shapes and things is just the clay build-up brush. So what I'll do is I'll hold shift and snap to the top view. You can see that by this head right here. I'm in the top view. And I'm going to start sculpting with the clay build-up brush. And this is an awesome brush. It's very intense. And because it's intense, it can cause problems. And I'll show you. So we'll dive right into the other underside. We're starting to see like little tiny bits right here that are peeking through the other side. I'm actually going to slice this and make it a little bit flatter just so I can prove my point a bit. So you see it's kind of coming through and that's no good. We don't really want that to happen. So uh, if one way to get around that is you can come over here to brush and go down to um, auto masking. Where's that at? Right there. And then click on back face mask. And now that way if we use this, oops, go forward just a little re-slash that thing and now if I use this we'll just crank the intensity to prove our point it's no longer going to affect that backside so I use this frequently it's a great tool to have at your disposal just make sure you can turn on auto auto masking back face masking turn that guy on and off Every time you switch your brush, you will need to do that, by the way. So if you have another brush, like the Damien Standard or something, 
you switch over to that, you're going to have to turn off back face again. Just, just FYI. And then another really fun brush that adds some interest, some interesting, that introduced some interesting things. You come over here to your brushes and hit C on your keyboard. And then I believe it is the, let's see, where am I at? Where is my mind? Crumble, crumble, crumble. Where's crumble? Do you see crumble? I don't see crumble. Right there. Crumble. So it's C and then four are the hotkeys for that. And this one's cool. And then I'm going to crank my resolution on this. If you run over the surface, it adds this kind of cool looking like, like polygonal. I don't know. It might look better for rocks, to be honest. Um, which reminds me, this is kind of, this is more of a dirt. So we want it to look kind of like mud or dirt. So you can actually use like there's a noise brush, which is pretty rad. Go over that with it with the noise, and then you can come down here to like deformation and do like an inflate or something like that. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. It's okay. I mean, it's it's not amazing, but it's something. So I'm gonna use my Damien Standard too and just kind of like scribble all around, and pretend like I'm being productive. You know, you when you're at work and your boss is walking by and you gotta pretend like you're being productive. I would never do that. I'd never. I'm always a hard worker. Um, anyway, yeah, just that kind of stuff that makes things interesting. You can also come over here to the contrast slider too and just crank that a good amount, and it really just helps those details to pop out a good amount. So, let's see if there's something else we can try. What's blob all about? Let's try blob. Ooh, blob's kind of fun. Look at that. It's adding some like, hence the name blob. It's cool. Yeah, I mean, we could come in here and be like, let's do this. Let's uh, use our fun, cr uh, uh, trusty, crusty curve, crusty, <laughs> crusty curve brush. And let's pull out like a friggin', oh, let's do that. Let's do ribs. We'll pull, we'll pull out like some dinosaur ribs or something. Oh, sometimes the navigation in ZBrush can get a little wonky. So that's going to be a rib right there. Yeah, now we're talking. So you're gonna need, for it to read as ribs, we're gonna need a couple of them. So uh, and the way I'm gonna do that is just by, as we've done before, just centering our pivot on that guy, holding control, and then drag another one out. Control, maybe rotate this guy a little bit. And then maybe come over here, change the width a little. Nice, very nice. So that's gonna look cool on our base. Uh, the other thing you can do, well, hold on a sec. Let's uh, fix these guys up just a little. Very nice. All right, and then um, let's do this. Let's go ahead and just do some masks. And these are gonna be like little rocks, little jagged rocks that are gonna kind of just scattered around. And we don't want them to be like all uniform, like perfectly spaced, so it's a little bit tricky. I love putting effort into the base. Like when you see display pieces, a lot of people just kind of they go cheap. They go to the hobby shop and they buy just a cheap wooden base out of pine and it's just flat and they paint it black and it's so boring. So I, I like to go the opposite and just get, get a little crazy with it. I think it adds just a level of of, um, of metal. Since we're on that theme, I'll stick with that. That you don't see a whole lot of. So I've got these guys extracted. I'm just going to run a Dynamesh on those now and then Maybe I'm going to crank polish, turn the polish on, and then using H polish, I'm going to just kind of add some more uh, planes to those little, little shapes. Turn on, uh, turn up my intensity to like 100, and just continue to like push those, get rid of that weird edge, you know, it comes from the extract, it looks like it's been extracted, and just add some different planes. Holding Alt and just going in, in and out with that. So 
So we'll rerun our Dynamesh on it. And make sure you get all those angles. It's a little bit handy. Now we got some fun rocks on our base, which is cool. And then another super fun thing to try is come back, clear your mask, and then let's paint some other splotches where maybe grass could go. And you're thinking to yourself, zebra says grass? Well, you're absolutely friggin' right it does. And that's what we're gonna try. Well, it doesn't give it thickness. It's not gonna print, you say. Well, there's a method to the madness. I'm sorry I said that, but it's it's gonna be it's gonna blow your mind. All right, so uh, now that I've got those masks, we can come over here and try this fancy fancy pants thing called um, not nano mesh, fiber mesh, and click on Lightbox fibers, and that's gonna bring up this menu here that has just a whole gaggle of interesting little fibers that we can throw in our mast area. And I really just want grass, so I'm just going to click on this guy, Fiber 78. And it's going to look a little crazy. Sometimes it does some weird stuff, you know. Actually, you know, let's try a different one. That one's a little, little bit too crazy. Let's try just this guy. No, not that guy. That's way too crazy. Let's do this one. This one's always good. So obviously, there's too much gravity, and the fibers are way too long, so we can adjust our length here. It's at 389. We'll just scroll this back. And then uh, another big deal is we're going to um, turn off the gravity. We don't need any gravity. Just set that guy to zero. And now so we've got grass kind of like sticking up. I guess we could add a tiny bit of gravity. You know, just have that kind of like clump down a little bit. And you can change your coverage to add like more thickness to the grass. And I know what you're still saying. You're saying that doesn't have any thickness. It's not going to work. But we're going to get to that. Just chill. Relax. Just relax, calm down. Let's scale the root up a little bit, just kind of for coverage. And then um, revolve rate, we could try that. Ooh, nah. Kind of interesting, I guess. Revolve rate, no. Nah. Nah, we want that zero. All right, so let's say that we dig this. Do we dig it? Let's blur our mask a little bit and see if it'll, it'll adhere to that kind of blurred edge before we accept this stuff. Um, okay, try it again. So now we unfortunately have to go back and do our, our same steps here. So we'll go to gravity, change our gravity, and then our length is gonna come down a little bit. Coverage is gonna go way up. Let's, let's crank our coverage, because we're gonna want that Get our root up again. Maybe crank the max fibers just a little bit as well. All right, all right. So we've got this. We'll drop down our. We'll drop down our max fibers just a tiny, tiny bit. And now the way you actually convert this to like a geo that you you can use is you just hit accept and just click no on that guy. You don't want to auto like like a, a preview. And then just turn off textures and we can kind of see what this is looking like. In fact, instead of that, I'm going to uh, flood my color with white, just fill object, and you can see those a little bit better. And like we talked about before, I know I heard you freaking complaining about how it doesn't have any thickness, so what we're going to do is go to Z Modeler here. And before I do this, this can be a somewhat intensive process, so I'm going to hit save and uh, be smart about it. And now if you're in Z Modeler, you notice you get these different things that pop up when you're over an edge, when you're over a face, or when you're over a vert. Right now we want to hover over one of the faces to where it says Q-Meshapoly. Q-Mesh Q-Meshapoly. That's not English. No one knows what that means. But if you hold space bar while you mouse over that, you can come over here and you see all these options. And up here, this is the actual, uh, uh, this is the actual function that you're going to perform. And this is the target down below. So we're going to perform this not on a single polygon, but we're going to extrude all polygons is what we're going to do. So if you click now on a face, like at this angle, if you click and drag to the left, you will give thickness to all of those grass fibers. And if you hit Control D to subdivide, they'll start to look a little bit more like grass. So, I mean, obviously it does, it looks a little bit weird, but you can see that you can actually introduce some pretty rad stuff just by playing around with these fibers. 
these might not have been the, the most ideal fibers to play with. And there's actual fiber brushes that you can play with too that will like allow you to you know push stuff around and comb stuff around. And well, for now we'll call this good, but I mean obviously you can probably get a better result. Probably turn down our density and like up our our twist and our twirl rate and then like you can play around with these things and you can add just some really cool little like vegetation down there. That has thickness and that is print, uh, printer friendly. So for now we're just going to uh, delete lower on those guys and then we'll go into geometry and then let's just see what happens if we run a dynamesh at 128 on that. It might crash. Oh look, so it's, it's made this kind of blobby. Um, so let's crank that a little bit higher. And then you could come down here too to do like, you don't, and you don't need to run a Dynamesh, you can just leave it as it was, but I'm just curious to see what happens with it. So, this is in Dynamesh, this is just like combining it all together, adding some Geo, this one did a weird thing. But you can see the kind of effects that you can get with it if you really take your time on it. Uh, but because I'm, I'm terrible at doing that, I'm, I'm just going to leave it as is for now. We're definitely going to adjust it probably down the road. And I mean, if you'd like to, too, you could really just come in here and play with the dirt detailing and probably get it 90% of the way there. Just change your alpha, change like alpha 08, change it to drag rect, and you can drag out these interesting little bumpy kind of shapes and stuff. And you could bring in, import your own noise uh, patterns or alpha alpha maps, too, if you'd like. Uh, if if that be if that catches your fancy there I did something I don't know what I did let's come over here and do inflate and then just kind of inflate stuff because inflating is fun and it gives it an interesting little look and uh, you could even come to standard and then add like a spray and this will add an interesting little noise pattern too the surface. We really just want this to be so metal, just as metal as we can make it. To pay homage to the incredible show. So, anyway. Okay, so let's alt left click on this plane that we created initially and let's just delete, delete that guy out of existence and so now we've got a base. Um, it's a starter base, but it's a base. And we, it's better than just a round black base, which is the worst. Merge things down here, and then I'm going to drop everything down in Y, just so our feet are revealed. Maybe center things just a little bit better. Alright, so now from here I wanted to make some adjustments to our our T-Rex and let's actually make a new let's clean things up over here we'll make a new folder called this caveman and we'll go ahead and I don't know why it threw my T-Rex in there it does some weird things to be honest I don't know what it's, why it did that it threw everything visible I guess in the sub tool or in the folder Weird. Click on that guy and then click new folder, caveman. And okay, that worked. It seems to have worked. And just put all his stuff in there. We'll get things, get these things in order. All right. So now, if I hold shift and click on these eyes, and then it'll turn everything else off so if I, I, ju I just want that folder to work with for now um, actually no it was the dinosaur that's right the T-Rex so we're gonna get rid of this guy just turn on what on earth is happening oh I have to have me on this okay that makes sense I guess kind of T-Rex is weird sometimes you guys alright so um, now we're on our T-Rex and we want to just modify all of our sub tools all of our visible sub tools and you'll and you know as you know like as I've trained you, you can only modify the subtool that you're that's, that's active, the one that you're on at the moment. So the body. But say I want to modify all of this together, just broadly. Uh, there's a super rad plugin called Transpose Master. You can come over here to Z Plugin, 
and over to Transpose Mesh, T-Pose Mesh, just click on that, and it's gonna drop everything into a new tool, all combined together. And so now we can actually make our adjustments to everything collectively, which uh, is super rad. And I was hating that little dip in the tail. I like the back to be like kind of straight looking. And then this guy just needs more mass overall. I'm using the move topological here. Teeth are separate topologies. Have I told you guys how much I love the move topological brush? Because I, I mean, if it was a woman, I would marry it. I love it. I told my wife I said that. Alright, so just playing with the jaw. Let's get the jaw to come out, be a little more prominent. Yeah, there we go. Nice, very nice. Overall, I want to do a broad scale, and we'll do that from the feet. Just scale everything up just a little bit right there. Back to the snake hook. Make sure that we have our symmetry on there for a second. I was getting nervous. Okay, so things um, look thicker and meaner and cooler. And the way to see our, our work, to compare against the changes we've made, we can always just come over here to our tool palette and click on our old tool and click between those and we can see the changes. So just go between, A, B those, and now you can see, okay, I like this change. I want these changes to be propagated back to my old tool. And the way you do that is just come back up to Z plugin and there's a button on the right that says T pose to sub tool. Click on that guy and it's gonna take all those and slap those back into their individual sub tools. It's pure friggin' magic. All right, awesome. So now let's hold shift and click those eyes and turn everything on. And now we can kind of see it looks like he's actually sitting on our dinosaur a little bit, a little bit now, which is neat. And another adjustment I wanted to actually make was I wanted to make some broad adjustments to our caveman. So I'm going to do the same thing here and just turn him on. I'm going to turn the spear off. I don't care about adjusting that right now. I just want everything visible to be modifiable. And um, I'm gonna hit save. So for whatever reason, um, switching over to Transpose Master will break this save button, but no worries, the save as button will always work as expected. So when that's an issue, you can always just click on save as and navigate back to your ZTL and then resave. And I hope that gets uh, rectified in the near future because that's pretty frustrating. All right, so snake hook brush, Oh, we want to switch over to transpose, so T-Pose Master, Transpose Master, T-Pose Mesh. Click on that guy. And one thing that's different between this and my subtool, drastically, is he has more of a neck in my concept. I know he's a caveman, but I want to give him more of a neck. So, just going to mask this, holding control and just masking his head area. And making sure that I only have his head area, his neck, a little bit of his hair is fine. Turn down our RGB intensity to feather that a little bit. And then control left clicking and tapping to invert our selection. Let's get our transform gizmo up by the neck. And then we'll just kind of scooch his head up just a little bit like that. Oh, that was weird. Make sure that you're in profile view when you do this because you might uh, split his head apart. And we introduce some ear weird little artifacts. The other thing you want to uh, keep in mind when you're in Transpose Master, do not adjust the topology. That means don't run a dynam uh, Dynamesh, don't run Decimation, don't run um, Z-Remesh when you're in Transpose Master. Just make these broad adjustments and then send it back when you're, when you're going to dive into those topological adjustments. Looks like his ear got a little bit stretched, so let's fix that guy. I wanted to adjust the shape of that a little bit anyway, so. Okay, his neck's a little bit longer. A lot a bit longer. Let's fix his collarbone area. I love that I can make like subtle little sculpting adjustments to it and it doesn't break it. It'll just send those changes right back. It's a rad tool. I've always been impressed with so, uh, Transpose Master. 
All right, so let's say we wanted to add like some some big old stretchy tendons coming out of the neck because he's screaming. Okay, radical. I don't want him to look like a Pantene Pro V model. I don't want his hair to be perfect. I'm trying to just uh, keep it primitive. All right. Uh, You'll notice sometimes too, if you hit shift, uh, shift F on your keyboard, you can see that you've retained some of your poly groups, so you still have that control over modifying those poly groups. Uh, so if I wanted to get those kind of out of the way and push those, pull those up a little bit more, you know. Again, just keep in mind, like I do this all the time, I'll get caught up in Transpose Master and forget that I'm there and then I'll start running my, my, my Dynameshes and stuff and it just, it breaks the whole transfer back process. So, um, can't stress that enough, just be real careful. All right, uh, his t I think his feet needed to be a, like adjusted to just a little. It's hard to believe, but I think his arms even needed to be bigger. I'm real happy with my concept, so I'm trying to do my best to really adhere to that. I'm pretty happy with it. It's one of those concepts where the idea just kind of comes to you and you have to get it out or you feel like you're going to go crazy. I don't know if you feel that way sometimes. tricky because I'm trying to own uh, I'm trying to add tonality to the muscles but I also want him to feel like just a big freaking cube like a big block just like he's he is in the in the cartoon don't know if I'm achieving that at all but. just keep rotating around to uh, change your perspective you're always rotating around your model. Awesome. Okay. Um, I think that's all I want to make on him for now. So let's uh, send everything back. Z plugin, T pose, sub tool. That popping noise is my chair. I need a new chair, and it's driving me crazy. It's not even comfortable. Anyways. Not even a comfortable chair, and it just all oh, does is make noise. All right, so all right, so our changes have been pushed back. Let's turn everything on and see how everything's looking in context. Very cool, very fun. How fun is that? If you would like to change your perspective, your camera, and things like that, the field of view, and all that, you can come over here and do that. Um, so obviously, we're gonna have to scoot him back up a little bit. Uh, let's turn back on. Let's turn back on that old spear. The spear. Okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Alright, so I think this is it for this video. Um, in the next video, I think what we're going to do is just now that we've got all the parts there, we got our base in, we've got everything there, um, we're just going to go in refinement mode and just get everything like perfectly refined, as, or not perfectly, but as best we can. So we'll decide if we want to add some scales and figure out what the process looks like for that um, to our T-Rex. And what I, I think I'm probably going to do is just have to end, or add a few scales here and there, but not get like crazy with it, you know. Um, just trying to match more of the shape of our tongue real quick to our concept before I wrap up, so. Let me 
Just getting that guy more in line. And sticking out like in the uh, in the series there he's just constantly both the caveman and the dinosaur are constantly sticking their tongues out like freaking out, just screaming like crazy. As you can imagine, they lived in crazy times. And then this stuff is always super fun to sculpt, all this really organic kind of stuff. So I'm gonna crank my resolution a little here. And then grab my uh, clay clay buildup brush and just add those like little kind of ridges that go along the sides of tongues. And smooth it back. And then using the Damien Standard brush, just kind of come in here. Let's do a mirror and weld real quick just to, whoops, that broke the world. So let's scoot it more close to center and then do a mirror and weld. And then it'll it'll look uh, better, it'll work better. So just scooted it back into center and now we have we have our, whoops, we lost some of our work. But uh, don't get frustrated because you'll just get better the second time, I guess, right? That's the positive way to look at it. First you swear, then you realize, oh, I'm just going to get better because I have to do it twice. And crank the resolution again. 500. Add that little crack that goes down the center. is going to be seen so it's worthwhile taking some time to detail it and then uh, go to deform and do like an inflate kind of cinches up the detailing a little and then uh, another fun thing would be to like add those little taste buds across the tongue use drag rect and then add these little bumps And if you make them large enough, they'll show up depending on the scale of your print. So, um, and then after that, I like to do a little bit of an, an inflate on those. Kind of adds a little more of an organic -y feel. And then we'll come back to the Damien Standard and continue to just push things. And then turning off symmetry now and getting out of symmetry mode. It always helps, I think. All right, cool. Tongue is looking pretty cool. Turn off transparency mode. We'll leave that as is for the time being. Let me modify just the shape. To match. So this little part down here that kind of connects. Use our clay up. Our clay build-up brush. Help with some of that like pulling and stretching of that really thin slimy skin there. Cool. And that's like I said, it's all gonna show up, so we gotta crank it, man. Alright. A little too fat, I think. Okay, awesome. All right, overall good changes. I think we've gotten things quite a bit more in line with where we want to be. This thing's kind of driving me nuts how sharp this. Radical, okay, so um, that's it for at least getting everything built that we need. Um, in the next video, it's going to be all about detailing, baby. So we're just going to figure out like uh, like how detailed we want to get with the the, um, the scales. Maybe I'll I'll show you how to make like a your own brush, your own custom brush for scales and things like that. And then um, you know detail like striations and the teeth and things, and just getting real, um, having a real fun time. It's going to be a lengthy video because I want this thing to be like murdered out with detail, like just awesome. So. 
Anyway, uh, again, call to action. I think that's the thing I'm supposed to do. So uh, if you're happy with uh, my instruction, my work, and what I'm making, um, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe. You know the drill. I'm also working on a website where I sell these digital and physical 3D print files. I should have that up by the end of the week, so I'm excited for that. I'm going to start putting that in the link in the description below. I had I had a site up before, but it was kind of like, I think it got infected with viruses and things, so I didn't want people using it. So I, I cleaned that out and rebuilt it, and that should be up within a week. And then you guys have access to tutorials and digital print files, as well as limited run physical 3D print uh, runs that I'm going to do. Uh, maybe maybe even some painted stuff that I'll, I'll sell. So if that interests you, let me know, um, and uh, we'll see you guys in the next video.